Today I'm tackling Yosemite's Panorama Trail as part of what's best described as the ultimate cut the crap guide to hiking Half Dome. Now, if you're familiar with Half Dome, specifically the cable route, you might be wondering why I'm not starting at the Happy Isle Trailhead in Yosemite Valley and following the Mist Trail like just about everybody else. Well, the answer is I've already hiked Half Dome along that route. And variety, as they say, being the spice of life, I was in the mood for something a little different, a lot less crowded, and significantly more challenging. That being said, if you're interested in hiking the Mist Trail to Half Dome Summit, or just interested in hiking the Mist Trail, I've got you covered. I highlighted the Mist Trail route in my previous video in this series, and we'll be highlighting the coveted approach to Half Dome Summit in my next video. So, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more of the best hiking guides available anywhere. Glacier Point affords us a rare opportunity to survey 90 plus percent of today's route. Looking south, Illilouette Fall is just out of sight, but there's a clear view of Panorama Cliff, as well as both Vernal and Nevada Falls, marking the Mist Trail route, as well as a critical trail junction if you plan to continue towards the summit of Half Dome, which is what I plan on doing today, traveling through Little Yosemite Valley to the north side of Half Dome and tackling the summit along the cable route. Now, without intelligent training and preparation, this route will be beyond the reach of most day hikers. But it's also a great route for backpackers who want to split up their journey over a couple days. Plan on starting your day early, ideally before the sun rises. Even if taking the short route, the morning hours are generally the most conducive to a successful bid for the summit. I was running about an hour late today because I'm pretty much always running late. The benefit to you is that I'm able to share the scenery that I would have otherwise been unable to capture. Maybe it's just me, but there's something spiritual about beginning your day before the sun rises and witnessing its rays dramatically unveil the landscape. I never get tired of it, especially here in Yosemite. You should know that the National Park Service rates the Panorama Trail as strenuous. Stretching approximately five miles between Glacier Point and the John Muir Trail near the brink of Nevada Fall, if you travel the full distance, you're committing to approximately 10 miles out and back and a couple thousand feet of elevation disparity. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be traveling quite a bit further, bringing my total distance to just under 23 miles by day's end. And I strongly advise that only extremely competent hikers attempt this route as a day hike. If you're interested in covering marathon distances in the backcountry or leveling up your backcountry proficiency, then I encourage you to watch my Rim to Rim video series for the most comprehensive and bulletproof training, fueling, and gear breakdowns available. If you're interested and can work out a shuttle system to or from the valley, it's also a lot of fun to pair the Panorama Trail with the Mist Trail or the John Muir Trail and hike down into Yosemite Valley from Glacier Point. The Panorama Trail also pairs really well with numerous other trails like the Buena Vista Trail, the Four Mile Trail, and the Pohono Trail. The Panorama Trail with its sprawling views of Yosemite Valley and your destination, Half Dome, doesn't disappoint. The trail drops 1,400 feet in the first two miles as you move through forests and burn scars en route to Illilouette Creek, which plummets almost 400 feet over Illilouette Fall, which can actually be seen from the Mist Trail, though few hikers recognize it. These first couple of miles are very deceptive. They're a breeze in the morning when your legs, lungs, and heart are fresh, but can be brutal after you've already covered 19 miles in Summited Half Dome. The two mile climb back to Glacier Point at day's end will be one of the hardest stretches of your journey. There are several places to filter water along the Panorama Trail, but there are no water spigots and no bathroom facilities until you approach Little Yosemite Valley. And in a few minutes, we'll attempt to tastefully discuss an unfortunate encounter I had with a woman who found herself without a bathroom just before tackling the most exposed section of the trail. Do yourself and the world a favor and use the restrooms when they are available to you. 
If beginning at Glacier Point, there are restroom facilities at the parking lot, as well as the Mist Trail Junction just beyond Nevada Fall and in Little Yosemite Valley at the Backpackers Camp. If zero hour comes anyway, and you don't have access to a restroom, you are required to bury human waste in a cat hole dug at least six inches deep and 100 feet from trails and water. You're also required to pack out all your tissue paper, unused or otherwise. If that sounds like a pain, it is. So use the bathroom facilities that are available along the trail. I cover this in more detail in my Rim to Rim series. But make sure you are fueling your body intelligently. Without good water and fuel management throughout the day, you're going to hit what endurance athletes call a wall. Potentially sabotaging your chance at reaching the summit, or worse, your ability to hike out under your own power. Your body has hydration and nutrition bank accounts. Make small, frequent, and intelligent deposits, and you'll be surprised how far you can go. Illilouette Creek is one of the highlights of this trail and is typically far less crowded than the waterways along the Mist Trail. Regardless of the trail you choose, it's important to use your head, hike smart, and exercise caution near fast-moving water or cliffs. Beyond Illilouette Creek, there are a number of spectacular viewpoints that follow spur trails. However, if your goal is Half Dome, I would suggest that these brief sidetracks are best left unexplored until your return journey when you have accomplished your primary goal and can better appraise whether you have time and energy for detours. For a little more than a mile, you travel along what's known as Panorama Cliff. The name is self-explanatory, so I won't waste our time explaining it, but I do encourage you to stick to official trails. The slope terrain along this section can be very deceptive, and venturing off trail towards the cliff can have disastrous consequences. As is often the case in the backcountry, and particularly in Yosemite, you'll frequently have to choose between your safety and getting that seductive closer look. At just over four miles into your trek, you'll come to a narrow set of switchbacks that drop about 400 feet before the Panorama Trail connects to the John Muir Trail, just south of the Nevada Fall footbridge. As you approach the brink of Nevada Fall, you'll encounter this sign warning you to stay out of the river. If you fail to see the wisdom in this warning, then for your sake I encourage you to find a hobby other than hiking. It really doesn't matter how many times I see the Merced River, it never fails to impress me. And the same can be said of the view from atop Nevada Fall. This is a special place that's also pretty unforgiving of foolhardy hikers. So make sure to exercise caution near the river and cliffs. I think it would be hard to find a better place to cap off our journey for today. But as I said earlier, we're just getting started. So make sure to hit subscribe and turn on notifications because the main event is coming next week. Until then, this is Mike from At Home and Wild Spaces wishing you the best of backcountry adventures.